from Cryptic Mystery, sent Monday, March 21st, 2011, 10.25 a.m. to Sonia. Subject, conclusion. We'll try to be as concise as possible. For the past nine years, I've been in love with you. Even when you dropped me, even when you went back, Even when I was trying to get over you with other relationships, my feelings for you never changed. You made slash make me feel in a way I never have that nobody has ever achieved. I've been and felt alone all my life, disconnected and out of place, even amongst my large family and closest friends. I've always felt like a shell, just interacting as I'm supposed to but always hollow inside. You were different. You touched me on a level that I didn't even know existed within me. You feel the emptiness that's always been a part of me. You made me feel whole. And knowing your own emptiness, your struggles, your desire and need for true, sincere love, I thought I'd found my purpose. I do not say that lightly, that I felt you were my purpose. It was not the exaggerated emotions of a young, infatuated girl. I truly felt it in my heart, in my spirit. Having always considered suicide, you made me want to live, to be a better person. That's close to a small miracle. So I took it to God. I prayed hard and I prayed often, always asking God not to let me walk a path I wasn't meant to because I didn't want to disrupt your life, spiritually or emotionally. So although I didn't know how it would work out, I had faith that it would. After all, you came to me. So despite the circumstances, I felt I was where I needed to be, with you, to love you and support you with all of my being. And it was never as though I was putting my desire for you before my desire to serve God. I felt that in serving you, I was in fact serving God, helping the Eternal's vessel be her best. And yes, I saw the obstacles spiritually and socially. I never ignored them or thought they could be easy to overcome. But I believed through time, patience, and effort, they could be overcome. After all, isn't that what the Bible teaches? That the world may not understand God's plan for your life. That obstacles, though daunting, in the end, make us stronger and better servants? This is what I believed. I never even felt guilty about your being married. Your problems and desire to leave existed before I arrived. I just felt I was there as emotional support during an inevitable process. Perhaps I was a fool for believing as I did, but I believed it nonetheless. So in my heart, I waited for you, waited for you to say, yes, I will try, waited for you to let me do whatever I could for you. I waited because I thought it was my purpose, that you would one day open yourself, even if just a little, to the possibilities. Because a life of comfortable misery is worse than one of socially unaccepted happiness, right? But I was wrong. I was wrong about everything all this time. Despite despite my prayers, it seems I've been living in a state of illusion, believing in something that was never really true. It's not a simple case of a relationship not working out as I'd hoped. I truly staked my life upon this. It was my perceived purpose. It was why I was here. It was what fulfilled me and made me want to live. 
and it was all a lie. So now I'm back to the beginning, back to the emptiness, the loneliness, the meaninglessness of my existence. I look around at my home, my valuables, my job, my family, at my overall stress-free and simple life. And I know I should be happy, but I'm not. Because I need something deeper to drive me. Living for the sake of me is not enough. Because I could care less if I live or die. Likewise, living just so other people don't feel sad about my death is just as empty. I work, I eat, I sleep, I go about my day simply because I just happen to still be here. I don't find true pleasure in any of it, even once loved hobbies. I'm back to where I used to be before you came into my life, and I hate it. It's like being cast back into the darkness after having seen the light. After having believed in something so hard and so long, only to have it never come to pass, my hope and faith are pretty much gone. Because if I was wrong about something so important and critical, how can I really be sure of anything? Don't misunderstand. I still and always will believe in God. I'm just not sure I believe in purpose anymore. I certainly don't believe in mine. And the thought of another 20 or 30 years of this is frightening. You may say it'll be okay, God will heal you, you'll find someone, but those words mean nothing. Because I used to believe it. And now I don't have the strength to anymore. I don't think God hears me. Takes care of me, blesses me, yes. And despite all I've said, I'm grateful for what I do have because I could have not even that. But my prayers feel as hollow as the rest of me. I'm just waiting to die. I do not say any of this to depress you or blame you or to attempt to change your mind about your decision. I don't even expect any of this to matter because it doesn't. Nothing will change, I know. But because I'm still working on untying myself from you, my emotions are unstable. Especially because I never got a goodbye. Never got real closure. Things just stopped with little explanation beyond, I can't handle it. Which I have no choice but to accept. Plus, your emotions for me have cooled, to say the least. You've no desire for me beyond friendship anymore, which I must also accept. I just wish it were mutual, because friendship for me is just another level of emptiness. Some days I'm completely at ease with how things are, and other days I can't stop crying. I often reflect on the course of events, because doing so allows me to see how foolish and deluded I was, which helps bring me back to reality. But sometimes, even in spite of reality, I can't let go. And those are the times when I get a bit off kilter. So yes, it still bothers me that you go places with him, sleep in the same bed with him, make love to him, ride in the same car as him, have his last name, so on and so forth. I don't know if you're happy or not. I always thought you weren't, but I was wrong about everything else. For all I know, maybe you are. Or are at least content. So the issues I have are my problem to deal with. Because your life is your choice and I have nothing to do with that. It seems I never really did. So that was 2011. And I'm, I'm bad with the math so let's uh Let's do some math real quick. I was 27 going on 28 that year. Um, living in Charlotte, had actually just 
um, gotten out of a, my very first real relationship. I used to count Sonya as my first real relationship, definitely not anymore, but my first real girlfriend, healthy relationship, good relationship. Um, things just didn't, things just, you know, relationships end. And still pining for this woman. And you hear a lot of the things I've been saying even now. Um, I'm clearly, this, this has been a cycle. This has been a cycle for years. I'm looking at the message now, like just, and as I read it, I, I still feel every bit of that. That was everything I've been saying now that I've been carrying with me. That's me carrying it. That's, that's exactly, this is exactly what I've been carrying. So going back to what I said, where it's like, was it that deep? Did I make it up? No, no, I didn't. And um, it's interesting, just before I even made this this entry, I was watching um, Jubilee. It's a station on YouTube that they have like a bunch of honest conversations. And the one I watched was um, men being honest. And one of the men, like, so basically what happened is like each one wrote like something, something traumatic that either happened to them or just something they, they want to share about manhood. So like one guy even wrote like, sometimes I'm not comfortable with a bunch of men because growing up he wasn't as masculine. So it just, he can't, he couldn't di differentiate masculinity from toxic masculinity. Very good conversations. One man talked about being um, molested as a child. Um, when his family was part of, I want to say the Jehovah's Witnesses, and his mother told him to never tell anybody. And so he was 27 in the video, and and he talked about how telling the secret helped take his power back. Um, and that's what, that's what this is. Even though it doesn't feel very powerful in this moment, because again, I'm faced with the reality of what I went through emotionally and then faced with the reality that I am still, I have still been carrying this this entire time and faced with the reality that this person was not the person that I thought she was and that the situation was not the situation that I thought it was. Um, it's funny cause I can say even in 2011, I'm saying I was wrong. I was wrong about everything. And I'm saying the same thing in 2024. <sighs> but I do hope and I do believe that this public confronting of, of all of this, this public telling of the secrets um, will make it so that the cycle finally stops. I've said before, I will be okay if the attachment to her stays there. I, I kind of expect it to at this point based on what I've been observing about myself. Um, and so the journey goes from, you know, the me trying to let this go time after time after time after time to, okay, what you... They're looking at what aspects I need to let go of and or I can let go of and what aspects are likely going to be with me for a while longer. So I think um, I'm realizing it's not the simple just like get over the relationship. That's not how this works because there are so many layers to it. And now that I have confronted the layers like now that I understand that layers are there and, and and what some of them are I can hopefully break those attachments and connections instead of trying to do it all at one time which is what I've been trying to do um, breaking just one at a time until finally 
the separation is complete. And it'll be hard. One of the difficulties is that I still wonder about wearing this bracelet. Because the part of me that's going to still be attached is likely the part of me that um, will always have affection. That sincere virgin love. That sincere idealistic love. Um, I think it's less about I don't want to lose that attachment to her. I don't want to lose the attachment to to that part of myself. I don't think that my ideals of love were wrong. I just clearly gave them to the wrong person. So, so yeah. This confession has been instrumental in being able to actually fully start the healing journey. Um, and by that, I mean like reading um, reading a lot more books that have to do with, with trauma, such as what I've gone through. Um, just being more intentional and, uh, excuse me, being more intentional and um, strategic in, in my healing. Because again, you can't heal what you don't confront. And that's because if you don't confront it, you can't understand it. And if you can't understand it, you cannot fix it. <laughs> So that has been, I think, the biggest lesson from all of this. Like I said, I'm winding this down um, partially so I can move forward with other things in my life. But as I think about early November, when I made the Facebook post saying what happened to now, where I'm like naming her, like have no, re no, have no, no issue saying her name, showing her picture because her privacy is no longer an issue for me. And it's not like slander or libel or defamation of character because it happened. It really happened. And if you don't want people to say these things about you, then you shouldn't do things for people to talk about. If you don't want people to know that you're a pedophile, then you probably shouldn't be fucking kids. And yeah, I consider my 18-year-old self, in relation to her, to be a child. Had it been the pastor's wife of somebody else's church that I had never been to, like when I went to college and just met some woman and she happened to be married and a pastor's wife, that'd be different. Because I really would be an adult to her. Still young, still, still horribly, um, you know, uh, imbalanced and power at play and all of that. But it's with Sonia is the aspect of of everything that I've said. Of everything that I've said over these past 20 plus entries. <sighs> oh, and I had another little uh, gift confession. Something I forgot I had gotten for her. It was my, I want to say it was my senior year of um, college. So it was what, 04, 05. And we were, we were still involved. We were still involved until sometime when I actually moved to Charlotte. So um, again, this, this relationship wasn't just a couple of years and just a couple of excursions. This was throughout my entire, my entire college career and then some. But something I had gotten her um, there had been this artist that had been featured on one of the talk shows uh, who did drawings of, of deceased celebrities and what they would look like um, like in the present time. Um, and so <laughs> I gathered my little bit of my little bit of pennies because um, I contacted him and I actually had him do one of Preston, uh, her son that passed away when we were both in middle school. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, uh, the gift didn't go over too well because I didn't like the image. I don't think she liked the image and I don't think she liked that I, that I did it. 
and I can understand. That's 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 something that's very very um, you know very very sensitive. Um, I meant it in you know in love. Like here's a picture of your son if you were still with us. And that's really all there is to that. Um, I don't remember fully what she said. It's just one of those things that, hey, I remember doing that. And so it's just part of the confessions. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I was delusional then. I've been in this delusion for the longest time. And again, I try so hard to just let it go. But like I just said, I, I now have better tools to really break down this connection. If anything, it's less, it's much less strong than it used to be. It's much less strong than it used to be. But like I said, the part of me that, that loved her and saw that future, um, I don't want to lose that part of me. That's another part of me that I like. It's part of me that I love. I love the way I love. I love the way that I am like dedicated and loyal to people I love immensely and that I will go to bat for them and fight for them and encourage them and push them. I love that aspect of me and I'm not going to let that go just because the first person I did all that for was a monster. Her being a monster does not make me a monster and I won't let it make me a monster. So... And the funny thing about this message is that um, the part where I said I'm not just some infatuated young girl, which I wasn't. I've been saying this whole time, like, this was more than just some, some random relationship for me. And, like, you hear in my words from then the same emotion that you hear in me now. And it's like, like, I could have wrote that email, like, last week. <laughs> That's how, when I'm reading it, I'm like, wow, I have not made any progress. Or I had not made any progress. <laughs> made a lot of progress now, let me tell you. I have told you. Ha. <laughs> so, I will say in full disclosure, because um, I'm very much about all the details. There was one paragraph from this email that I took out. And that's because it mentioned my ex that I had broken up with and talked a little bit about that connection. I took it out because um, the only person that Confessions focuses on is Sonya and her immediate family. Um, I don't, I'm not naming anyone else. And that paragraph really didn't take away from, from the email. So again, just to be clear, just somebody says, hey, did you really write that or you know did you really write that then or did you make this up now because that's the other thing people are like oh that's all ai she's just making this up um no <laughs> i know i know what digital forensics are <laughs> i'm not stupid i'm not gonna sit here and make up a, a whole situation for somebody to be like yeah you made all this stuff up no mm -mm. no this is not that's not how i work so like I said, there's there's more emails on the IBM server where she used to work in the state where I used to work. So if anybody want to sleuth, they can sleep on their own. I've told you everything that I have to tell you. I have told you, I've told you everything with that's in my um, it's still in my hands, it's still in my purview. So as always, thank you for bearing witness. You're welcome to share any thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you again soon.